Welcome to Lecture 2 for 4428 Advanced Dynamics. Last time we, we gave basically an introduction and talked about some 3D vector analysis. And in particular we found how to describe rotating coordinate directions via this omega and the cross product. And talked a little bit about system energies and their use, integrals of motion and what that really means. And for this lecture, for the last lecture, we talked about relative motion, how to describe motion particles via the motion of intermediate objects for this lecture. And then we're going to look at how to determine the position, velocity, and the acceleration of points moving in complex motions by using intermediate coordinate systems. And what you'll find is, is we're going to use all this stuff to tell us how to handle the objectives for this particular lecture. Okay. So here's my version of a problem of objective. If you look here, what we have is we have um, a tall like flagpole uh, with a rotating mechanism up at top, and uh, these collection of guys are circling around on lines about about this top pole. So if this guy, for example, who's hanging upside down, difficult maybe to see, but this guy here, all right. And perhaps he's holding a, a glass of water. So, how would you know what direction he should be holding that piece of that glass to actually avoid spilling the water? The idea really is is that what we're going to see is when we talk about moving coordinate systems, we're going to define maybe a coordinate system on this particular glass, and then we have a coordinate system on this person who's being held onto another person, we can have a coordinate system defined for that person, and this whole thing is spinning at omega, and then, of course, then we might have like a global coordinate system here, and if we were to spin this fast enough, maybe Coriolis forces and the rotation of the Earth would be relevant. Uh, so the idea is that for this problem objective, we have to keep all these different coordinate systems in mind and how we were and and what we're looking for is how to relate the coordinate systems uh, together okay and the idea really is just the nested coordinate systems velocity and acceleration and moving coordinate systems that are rotating and translating so let's look first at a few pre preliminary things before we launch into the full full blown derivation of rotating and translating systems and the reason is is that the full blown derivation is a bit is a bit uh, a bit big and we can look at some simpler versions of things uh, first off. And this should be beginning. Beginning with rigid bodies, velocity, and acceleration. Then we'll talk about the derivatives of vectors and rotating systems, um, more or less what we talked about last time, but um, a little more detail about general vectors, not just the unit vectors that we saw before. So let's talk about rigid bodies and for their velocity and acceleration. If we talk about uh, the relative velocity of, say, a point, point P, with respect to some other point, point A is written here, so we have point P and point A. And we'll say that V, velocity of P with respect to A, we'll write that as V as P slash A, and that's velocity of P minus velocity of A. All right? And sometimes you might just say, well, that's just the velocity V, all right? Just the time derivative of this unit, this vector R. So that's R dot. Okay? And that's minus VA, which is the time derivative of RA. So if we further, furthermore suppose that this A is a fixed with respect to this, perhaps this coordinate system, cap O, cap X, cap Y, cap Z, then, then this term, V sub A, will be zero, because the time derivative, of course, then R sub A would be equal to zero, because it's going from a fixed point to a fixed point. And so then the V of P with respect to A, the velocity of P with respect to A, would just be the velocity of P, and that'd be omega cross rho, where we have A here is defined as a external point that's not at the origin, 
and this rho is the vector that goes from a to p. And notice that we all we're doing is we're just trying to write things in terms of this omega, where this omega represents an angular rotation, and this p, this rho, I should say, is just a a curvature, radius of curvature, defined from a to p. Let's also suppose then that that uh, the magnitude of rho is constant. So we'll say that this rho, time derivative of it, that's going to be equal to zero. All right. So p and a are at a constant distance from each other, and so p and a are constant distance from each other. Rho is a constant, and and so what ends up happening? say that the amplitude of rho is equal to zero. What ends up happening is, is that this point P actually goes around A in a circular fashion, right? Defined about this axis of omega. Remember from last time we talked about B, B prime. So P and A are at a constant distance from each other. If now we go back and say, all right, A is moving with velocity V sub A with respect to cap O, cap X, cap Y, cap Z, then we'll actually have a situation where we have v is equal to vp, right? Velocity of point p. That's really a velocity of a minus velocity of p with respect to a. Okay, and that's equal now to v sub a plus this term that we had before, omega cross rho. Acceleration is just the time derivative of that. V dot is equal to A. V dot A. This should be a vector, by the way. Sorry about that. It's just the time derivative of this particular component here. Plus the time derivative of omega cross rho. So omega dot cross rho. Plus omega cross rho dot. So now rho dot is equal to rho dot x, ex, plus rho dot y, ey, plus rho dot z, ez, plus rho dot x. Notice that we have a time derivative of the unit vectors, e sub x, e sub y, and e sub z. Right? It turns out that, remember we said that this distance from a to p is a constant. So that means that the amplitude, the magnitude, the length of rho is equal to a constant. So this will be zero, this will be zero, and this will be zero. All we're left with is this latter part. Right. And this latter part, remember that e sub x hat dot is equal to omega cross e sub x hat. e sub hat y dot is equal to omega cross e sub y hat. e sub z hat is equal to omega cross e sub z. So at the end of the day, what we end up with is omega cross rho. This original vector is equal to rho dot. And the only reason we have don't have this other component is because the amplitude, the size of rho, remains a constant. Rho is rotating at an angular velocity of omega with respect to O, X, Y, Z. And so A is equal to V dot is equal to R double dot. Okay, which is equal to r sub a double dot plus omega dot cross rho plus omega cross omega cross rho. Right. So that's the idea. And the reason, note that this one comes from here, or rho dot is here, and this rho dot really is omega cross rho. Not much else we can do about omega dot, so we just leave it as we did before. And this r double dot a comes from this v dot a up here. That's all there is to it. This only works now if p and a are at a constant distance from each other, because remember we made this assumption. Derivatives of vectors in rotating systems. If you remember we said that e sub, e sub i hat dot generally is equal to omega cross e sub i. And the problem of it is, is finding omega. Unit vectors have constant length. What about a general vector, say A? 
Well, A, if we take the and take a look at an inertial or fixed coordinate system, which means that each of these vectors, e sub x hat, e sub y hat, and e sub z hat, are pointing along fixed coordinate system directions, and we take the time derivative of A. Then we get A sub x dot, I'm sorry, I just covered up the dot there, A sub y dot, A sub z dot, each of those times E sub x hat, E sub y hat, E sub z hat, respectively. And then we have the time derivatives of the unit vectors themselves here, right? As shown here. So we have A sub x hat, E sub x dot, A sub y, E sub y hat dot, and A sub z, E sub z hat dot. Each of these terms, for an inertial or a fixed coordinate system, because their directions never change, are equal to zero. So all we're left with is the first three components in this derivation. But if you have a rotating coordinate system, then we can't say that these are zero anymore. So if we look at another coordinate system that has the same origin, but rotating at, say, omega, with respect to cap O, cap X, cap Y, cap Z, then we have to worry about the derivatives of the vectors in addition to the derivatives of the lengths of the vector along each direction. So let's look here. If we look at the figure at the right, what we have is cap O, cap X, cap Y, cap Z is in our inertial system. And then we have one, two, three as a as a coordinate system that happens to be rotating. And that rotation is defined by the axis well, of omega here as a vector omega, where it's the axis, and then the the length of omega tells you how fast it's rotating about this particular axis. So if we write A, well we have A1, E1, A2, E2, A3, E3, right? And you can also write this out as a sub x, e sub x, just like we, and so on and so forth, just like we did before. But the point of it is here is to look at define this vector in terms of coordinate system. Notice that when we write a vector, we are not talking about using any particular coordinate system. The vector exists independently of a coordinate system. The a vector is shown here, and how we write it depends on which coordinate system we choose. We can choose to write it in terms of e1, e2, e3 or we can choose to write it in terms of EX, EY, EZ. Here, A dot, the dot is missing again, is equal to A1 dot, E1, A2 dot, E2, A3 dot, E3, just the same as before, and then we have to add in A1, E1 hat dot, plus A2, E2 hat dot, and then A3, E3 hat dot. And as you might guess, each of these is really going to be equal to omega cross E1, for example, and it's a matter then of trying to figure out what omega is. We know that, um, so this just is shown here, E1 hat dot is equal to omega cross E1, and so forth. So, A dot is equal to this a1 dot e1, a2 dot e2, a3 dot e3, okay, and that's plus omega cross a. This first part is the rate of change of a with respect to the rotating system. So when we write this vector a in terms of a rotating coordinate system, we have a part, this first part, that's relative to that moving coordinate system, relative to the rotating coordinate system. All right, and then we have another part, the second part here that talks to us about how the coordinate system itself is moving. Okay, We might write that first part, A dot sub R, which means that this is relative to this moving coordinate system. And you can say that this A dot R, all it really says is this is A1 dot E1, A2 dot E2, A3 dot E3. The scalar parts here are, we take a time derivative of those, but we leave the unit vectors alone. The unit vectors only come into it over here when we talk about omega cross we talk about omega cross a. And one thing to always remember that this is not the same as a dot unless it's an inertial coordinate system where this second part would be equal to zero. They're totally different otherwise. 
We can use this for any two coordinate systems that share the same origin by rotating at omega with respect to each other. If you notice then that O x y z and O one two three, this O is the same has the same origin. Okay. So we can say that, for example, the rate of change of A in coordinate system A, well that's A dot sub A. That's equal to A dot sub B. And the rate of rotation of B with respect to A, well that's omega B with respect to A cross A, this vector A. Right. So this is the rate of change of this vector in that in the B coordinate system. And then we factor in the rate of change rate of rotation of the B coordinate system with respect to the A coordinate system and cross that with the original A vector and we end up being able to say what the rate of change of this A vector is in the A coordinate system. This is how you nest the coordinate systems one inside of another. In other words, you can write it just like this. Now one thing you can notice is that omega A, the rotation of the coordinate system A with respect to B, is equal to minus the, the omega of B with respect to A. And since the A is a vector, it doesn't matter which coordinate system A or B it is viewed from just how you write the components when you're actually writing down a1, e sub 1, a2, e sub 2, and all of that. It's not so, that's the only time that ever really matters. Since a is a vector, it always is exactly the, the same length, the same direction, the same everything. Just how we write it is different when we choose a particular coordinate system. Now if we look at a situation where the origins are not at the same location, then we need to consider things a bit differently. So if we say that cap O, cap X, cap Y, cap Z is the A inertial frame coordinate system shown with points P and O prime as shown, and this O prime is at another origin of a new coordinate system, little x, little y, little z, and we're looking at point P again right there. All right. So we have coordinate system A and we have coordinate system B. Coordinate system A is not moving, it's it's inertial or a fixed frame, and then B is is translating and rotating. Okay, and it's most definitely not inertial. So if you look at this vector, we, if we define a vector straight from the inertial coordinate system straight to P, we could go take a sidetrack and we could go through O prime on the Y, so we could say that's cap R, and then rho from this O prime to P. So then R dot, well, it just because these are vectors, we don't have to worry about anything until we start talking about um, coordinate systems. R, if R is equal to cap R plus rho, then R dot is equal to cap R dot plus rho dot. And similarly, R double dot is equal to capital R double dot plus rho double dot. But what are rho dot and rho double dot? And we can figure out what R, R dot, and R double dot are because if you look back at the figure, that's just the, the position the velocity and the acceleration of O prime with respect to O. So we can write out what rho is in terms of you know components in in the moving coordinate system. Notice these are all the lower case components. And so this is relative to our moving coordinate system here. So let's look at the first three terms. Here we have rho dot x, ex, rho dot y, ey, rho dot z, ez and then we have the time derivatives of the unit vectors, rho x, ex dot, ey dot, and ez dot there. These, these first three terms are actually written as rho dot relative to the moving coordinate system. All we're saying is we're taking the time derivative of this rho vector, treating this coordinate system, lower, uh, O prime, lowercase x, y, z, as not moving. And we're only looking at the rate of change of the lengths of rho with respect to the origin of that moving coordinate system. And these unit vectors aren't moving. But then we add on the fact that the unit vector direct coordinate directions are moving for our lowercase systems over here at the right hand side. And we know what this is. This is e sub x hat dot, that is just going to be just going to be omega of this B coordinate system with respect to the A coordinate system. Right, crossed with our original e sub x. So if that's the case, and then we have this rho specs out front, and we carry this on all the way through, what we end up with is omega 
be with respect to A, cross with rho. So the velocity of P, say, is both just R dot, defined with respect to the cap O, cap X, cap Y, cap Z system. It's also cap R plus rho dot, by sidetracking through our moving coordinate system. In other words, this rho dot can be written as shown here, all right, as r dot plus cap r dot plus rho dot relative to the moving coordinate system plus omega b with respect to a cross rho. So this r dot is the velocity of rho prime with respect to cap o i cap x cap y cap z. And this rho dot and what's relative, again, is the velocity of point P with respect to lowercase o prime, x, y, z, and omega, B with respect to A, cross rho, is additional velocity due to the rotation of this coordinate system that is not included in rho dot r. To see this latter one, imagine what would happen if, for example, the point P is just fixed same fixed with respect to this coordinate system, and this coordinate system is rotating rapidly, then you might imagine that this definition of rho in this coordinate system, say rho is equal to or lowercase x, e sub x, and so on, I think where these are small letters at the bottom, that is going to be changing dramatically because the coordinate directions will be changing direction all, all the time. The difference, the, both if the effect will appear both in this term and this term, and they will tend to cancel each other out. The acceleration is just a derivative of this, and so what we might do is we, we know that the acceleration is just r double dot with respect to the global coordinate system, the fixed coordinate system, I should say. But taking the sidetrack again, it's the r double dot plus the time derivative of this first term plus the time derivative of the second term that we just had from this first equation here. So, it's a matter of trying to figure out what the time derivative of the first term is. Well, the, this original term, this rho dot relative to the moving coordinate system, that was just the time derivative of the magnitudes of the, of the, the along these different coordinate directions in the, in the moving system. And if we take the time derivative of it, we end up with rho dot rho double dot x, ex, rho double dot y, ey, rho double dot z, ez, plus rho dot x, ex dot, notice that the uh, dots are distributive here again, and as a consequence then, this is rho double dot relative to the moving coordinate system, okay, and then the second term here is omega cross rho dot relative to the moving coordinate system because again this is omega cross e sub x right omega cross e sub y omega cross e sub z and rho dot x rho dot y rho dot z that's rho dot r and the second part the time derivative of this well the time derivative is distributed across the cross product so it's dot omega b with respect to a cross rho plus omega B with respect to A cross rho dot. Well, we've just got went through all the trouble of finding rho dot on the previous page, and we can substitute in for that here, uh, because rho dot is equal to rho dot relative to the moving coordinate system, coordinate system plus omega B with respect to A cross rho. So then the time derivative of this is with the substitution of these in for omega do, uh, rho dot here is as shown here. So if we put all this back in, you notice that we get this term here, omega ba cross omega ba cross rho, and then we have one of these terms here, omega ba cross rho dot r relative, and we'll have one from an we'll have one again from another spot, and this omega dot b respect to a with rho. It shows up here, right? That's that. There's two of these, so we'll end up with a two here, and then we have R capital R double dot, and we have row double dot R. 
at any rate, we end up with the global acceleration with respect to the fixed coordinate system is equal to the acceleration of the moving coordinate system with respect to the fixed coordinate system plus the acceleration point P with respect to the to the moving coordinate system plus this term here whereas we have the rotation of the, of the moving coordinate system with respect to the fixed coordinate system crossed with the velocity of point P as described in the moving coordinate system multiplied by 2. One of these terms comes from each of the derivatives, so we have it appearing twice. We have the acceleration of uh, angular acceleration of the rotation of this, this moving coordinate system B with respect to A, crossed with the vector rho. And then we have this last term where we have omega B, B with respect to A cross omega B with respect to A cross with rho. This first term, R, must be R double dot. That's the absolute acceleration of B with respect to the inertial frame. The second one is acceleration with O prime X, Y, Z in O, X, Y, Z. The third term, shown here, is acceleration of, of P in O, X, Y, Z. The Coriolis force, sorry, this is the Coriolis force here, number four. Right, it's a two times angular velocity of O prime X, Y, Z relative a cross product with the relative velocity of p and o prime x y z. This term, number five, is angular acceleration of o prime x y z with respect to o x y z. And then number six is the centripetal acceleration of p and o prime x y z due to the rotation of this coordinate system. So after all that, you might wonder, well, why in the world we just do this? It's because Newton's second law only works with respect to an inertial fixed frame. So if you're wanting to use Newton's second law, it doesn't work in any other case except when you have everything written with respect to the inertial fixed frame. It doesn't mean that all of your vectors have to have components defined in terms of the inertial fixed frame. It just means that at the end of the day, the tail of the very last vector that you write has to be connected to a fixed frame. So in other words, f is equal to mr double dot is OK but f doesn't equal m rho double dot. That's the idea. Because this is rooted in a moving and rotating coordinate system. So let's try an example. The first one's not so good, forgive me, but the second one is a better one. If you look at the, uh, the text of 2 and 5, for example, plane flies northwest with relative velocity v naught over a city at 45 degrees north latitude. The airplane's acceleration with respect to a non-rotating coordinate system is what we're looking for. If, the, if it's attached to their center and if the plane is flying at a radius r in a great circle route, then we're going to express it in spherical coordinates. Here's a uh, kind of a sketch for it. So we have the Earth, such as it is, drawn in the green outline here. Z is sticking out the North Pole, and the velocity, of the, the angular velocity of the Earth is given by omega sub cap e, right? And what we're going to say is is that that x and y are fixed and so they are not following along the rotation and z remains pointing straight up so it doesn't follow along the rotation of the earth however this coordinate system the o prime there's o prime here is um oops sorry This is O prime here, sorry, right there, can attach to the center of the earth. O prime R, which R comes up here up to the point where we're looking at our plane. Theta, perpendicular to that, phi is rotating at the, with the earth. So this coordinate system, e sub, e sub R, E sub phi, e sub theta there, is rotating at a rate with respect to the fixed coordinate system, omega sub E. So omega of this B coordinate system, the spherical coordinate system, with respect to the fixed coordinate system, which happens to be Cartesian, is omega sub B with respect to A is omega E. Furthermore, this theta is equal to 45 degrees because we said that the latitude was 45 degrees. Now, if we choose to substitute in for the acceleration, because what we're looking for here, we're looking for the acceleration with respect to the non-rotating coordinate system attached to their center. 
So we're just going to use this equation. What I recommend you do is, in most times, is you find the position vector to the particular object you're wanting to find, uh, the velocity and acceleration for, say, and then take a couple of time derivatives. Here, just to show you what the equation does, we're just going to use the equation right from the very beginning. The Earth has a constant rotation rate, almost. It's slowly decreasing in rotation rate, but the decreasing rate is really irrelevant. So omega dot b with respect to a is equal to zero. And so this term is equal to zero. All right. We'll notice that rho is equal to r e sub r, because we're going from the center of the Earth, where O prime. O prime and O are co-located, and we go out to where this object is is and the plane is moving, and that's equal to r e sub r. And since omega b with respect to a is equal to omega e e sub z, rotating about the capital Z direction, it's omega b sub a. We're going to write this not in e sub z, we're going to write it in terms of the spherical coordinate system. That's omega e cosine of theta e sub r. Notice how that this is the e sub z direction, and that this is the e sub r direction. This is the angle between the two. That's theta. And when theta gets small, e sub z and e sub r are nearly in the same direction. So we'd say that uh, e sub z is cosine of theta e sub r minus sine theta e sub theta, because when theta reaches nearly 90 degrees, this e sub theta direction, notice e sub theta here, this, and the theta pointing in that direction, e sub theta direction is nearly straight down, and opposite e sub z, again, whenever theta is nearly 90 degrees. So we have omega sub e here, cosine theta e sub r minus omega e sine theta e sub theta. We've converted from e sub z to e sub r and e sub theta to match our moving coordinate system. For this case, we have that the theta is 45 degrees, so we end up with cosine theta is just 1 over square root of 2, and then this minus sine theta is one over minus 1 over square root of 2. So this omega b with respect to a is cross rho is shown here, omega e r divided by the square root of 2, e sub theta. And we end up with, as a consequence, then by taking that the centripetal term, is minus omega e squared r divided by the square root of 2, e sub theta plus e sub r. The velocity of the plane with respect to the rotating earth is v naught. So the velocity with respect to the rotating coordinate system is given by, right, rho dot with respect to the moving coordinate system is v naught. The acceleration of the plane with respect to rotating Earth is v naught, which is equal to zero. Isn't that right? So what do we have here for rho double dot with respect to the moving coordinate system? We'd have rho, the r e r, which is rho dot r dot e r, and that's v naught, after all. And then we end up with rho dot, double dot, relative to the moving coordinate system, is v dot, right, minus one half square root e, one over square root of two e theta minus one over square root of two e phi, plus the rotation rate of the plane with respect to the coordinate system plus v naught. Okay, and what we have to take into account is the fact that the plane is moving with respect to this moving coordinate system. This is the, if this is confusing, this is why it's better it's better to use a vector defined like so, r plus rho, and then go from there Take a derivative and find your velocity, and then take another derivative to find your acceleration. It's the reason why using the formulas from the very beginning can be very confusing.